Hi, I'm Rich Wyatt. Welcome to GunsmokeGunsTV.com. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is a true heavy rifle. Now, this not only is a very, very cool gun, and one you should all aspire to have, something like this, but this particular gun, this is kind of a, a celebrity gun. This is uh, one of the coolest guns I've ever had the opportunity to hold, shoot, and hunt with. Now, I shot my very first African buffalo with this rifle, and this rifle was designed and built to spec for my mentor, Colonel Jeff Cooper. Now, Colonel Cooper talked about a variety of different rifles, but this is one that he called the Heavy. Now, the Heavy is a serious gun. What is it that makes this gun a Heavy? Not the weight of the gun, the caliber of the gun. This is a 460 GNA. That stands for 460 Guns and Ammo, and this cartridge, 460 Guns and Ammo, was originally designed by Tom Seattos, who a long time ago was with Guns and Ammo when it was started by Pete Peterson of Peterson Publishing. Now this gun is the perfect, heavy, African, dangerous game gun. You can hunt Alaska with this, you can hunt anywhere that you need to have serious knockdown power. If you're shooting an elephant, or you're shooting a buffalo, or not a not an American bison, but a true African buffalo. That's dangerous game. Um, a hippopotamus, a lion, whatever it may be that you need to bring down, this is a serious cartridge, folks. It's a 45 caliber cartridge that is moving out of the barrel at a high rate of speed. This is 400 grains of bullet hammering down the pipe. Now, it's a short barrel, it's got metallic, sights. This sight is called a ghost ring rear sight. So when you sight this gun, you've got a very faint ring right there, which your eye automatically centers up on the front sight right there. Okay. Now the gun's heavy. It's a big, heavy gun. It's got a big, deep belly. This holds six rounds and one up the pipe of 460 GNA. Let me tell you from personal experience, when you're cruising along in the Okavango Delta, on water in a Makoro, which is cut out of a tree. And let me tell you, I'm not a very well-balanced guy, and you're rocking around in there, and there are hippos and lions and buffalo and elephants all around you. It sure is comforting to have this rifle sitting right by your side. Now, I was the one that drew first blood with this gun, and that means a lot to me, I'll tell you that. Colonel Cooper always said that a rifle like this is not one that you really even need to own. He said this is a gun you should borrow because you're not going to use it very often and you don't need it all the time. And he's kind of right. The problem with that is I borrowed this gun and I shot my very first buffalo and drew first blood with this gun. Now, many other people have shot it since then and they have uh, scored and that's fantastic. But now I really wish that I owned this gun. I really wish that I had used my own. 460 GNA and had it made up. So I would have had it ready to go and I could have kept it as a memento all this time. But I didn't and so be it, I'm stuck with it. Now a couple important things. You see that this gun has a pre-64 Model 70 or Mauser style extractor on it. That is critical on a dangerous game gun. You cannot have a little wimpy extractor on this gun. This is important. It's more important than accuracy because you're not going to shoot this gun at huge great lengths. Okay, this is not reach out there and touch somebody. Dangerous game is right in here where it's dangerous. That's what makes it fun. It's got a three position safety on it right here. It also has this very unique feature behind the trigger guard. Now the purpose for this is when this big gun goes off, it rocks your world and it keeps your finger and allows your finger to slide if necessary underneath the trigger guard so it doesn't jack up that knuckle right there. Very important feature with this gun. This one is called the Kimber Crusher. 
Now, this is not the Kimber that you know of today. That company did not make this gun. This was the old Kimber Rifle Company. They made the action, and Jeff had the gun completely built around it. Now, many, many of you probably say, well, that gun looks familiar to me. This is the gun pictured in The Art of the Rifle and many other publications that, that Jeff has written. But it's definitely in that book, The Art of the Rifle. This is a fantastic, fantastic gun, and one you should look at if you're going to design one for hunting dangerous game over in Africa. Now, advantage over a double rifle, which is a great classic gun, and two shots as fast as you could possibly get them off. The advantage is this one holds seven. So not only do you get seven rounds that you can continually fire to protect yourself, and you may need them, because I don't know how many of you have anchored a buffalo with one shot, but it doesn't happen all that often. I mean, it does. I know it does. I spined mine and buckled them up, put them right to the ground. They made me shoot them two more times before we approached, because the buffalo are that dangerous. They don't even want to eat you. They just want to trample you into the ground and kill you. What a fantastic animal. It's the one animal that I've ever hunted that as soon as you shoot it, it immediately starts looking around to see where you are so it can kill you before it dies. Phenomenal will in these animals. Jeff had another gun very similar to this called Baby. It was a 460 built on a Bruno ZKK 602 action with a pop-up rear sight. That gun went to Africa and Jeff left it over there so he could constantly use it. Well, he had a little falling out with one of the people that kept the gun over there and luckily John Ganaway came to the rescue and John was one of Jeff's master instructors. There are six of Jeff Cooper's master instructors. Tom Russell, John Ganaway, Dan Predovich, Mike Weidlich, uh, myself, and Louis Auerbuck. Now, Louis Auerbuck, as you know, has passed away. And so now there's only five left. For all intents and purposes, John Ganaway and Mike Weidlich are retired. Mike moved out of the country. He went to California. Um, and Dan Predovich is very busy. He doesn't teach much. Really, the only two of us that are consistently teaching anymore are Tom Russell and, and myself. But Dan Predovich still is after it. And, you know, John still is active in the gun industry. He's just not teaching. But John Ganaway went over and got that baby back from Africa and saved it, snatched it out of the lion's mouth, and brought it back here. Someday, we hope that you'll be able to see all of Jeff Cooper's guns on display and they'll be available to the public because Colonel Cooper had some very serious guns. One thing you got to love about Colonel Cooper, I remember many times he would receive a gun as a gift from a gun company or from someone and he would open up the box, close the box, slide it back and say, no thank you, I don't need that gun. I, I remember once there was a gun of the year, I don't even want to say what gun it was, and they were going to present it to him and Colonel Cooper and I went over to SHOT Show and we saw the gun and he picked it up and he tried to trigger and this gun was known for its trigger and he handed me the gun and I pressed the trigger and he said, Rich, is that the worst trigger you ever felt? And I said, yes, Colonel, that's pretty bad. And he said, yeah, tell him I don't want it. And he drove away. He was in a little uh, rascal cart. And he just took off. And then all of a sudden, all these guys with the suits came over and the big gun companies and the magazines and the gun writers and they said, where's the Colonel? We're ready to present this gun. I said, he didn't want it. That's how he was. If it wasn't a good, serviceable utility piece, he didn't use it. This is a gun that you, was used. Colonel Cooper had but one gun that sat on the shelf and wasn't fired. The rest of them were stuff that got used and enjoyed and loved. And the rifle is the king of the jungle, kind of like, kind of like the lion. So that is Colonel Cooper's Kimber Crusher. We'll be back with more stuff. Don't go away. 21 inch heavy barrel. 41 inches overall length. 13 and a quarter inch length of pull. Positively mounted front sight. Just a post, easy to see. Heavy duty. Mauser style extractor. That's the claw type extractor you want to have when you're hunting dangerous game of any sort. I personally like it on an every gun, but if you can't get it, so be it. Ghost ring sight. This is a big hole, not a peep sight. It's a big hole. Let's see if we can get behind it and look right through those sights. <laughs> 